So Patrick, it's amazing having you with us. For those people watching, they've never heard of a futurologist, uh, they've never met you. Tell us, what, what do you do? Yeah. I'm often described as Europe's leading futurist. I work with governments and very large companies around the world. I've worked with around 400 of the largest 2,000 companies, every sector, every industry, every region, always doing the same thing, helping people to understand the future more clearly. So I predicted uh, new pandemic risks like COVID, unfortunately. I've been warning of that for the last 20 years. I'm a physician in my first training, and I work with many church leaders and organizations like the Church of England and Hope. That is just, it's so amazing to have you with us. So really, it, it's because of that expertise that we feel obviously there's something something happening right now. The pandemic has changed things. Mm. We've, we, if you like, we've been pushed through almost like a pressure cooker experience. Mm -hmm. And that has very important implications for the church in this country right now for mission. Uh, we've seen some of this year. I mean, we, there was a, a survey done by The Guardian. Mm -hmm. uh, they printed that headline figure. We've just done some deeper digging into some, some more results and stats. And we, we've sent this over to Patrick because we feel there's such a key message that's right now. And the number one headline stat is that 23% of the adults in England say that they have regularly, that's at least once a month, um, been attending church online or, or watching us on TV or um, even listening on the phone. But they have been engaging with, uh, with church at this time during the pandemic regularly online. That's quite an incredible statistic. That, that would be more higher than how it used to be before. Yes. So we basically, we have grown during the pandemic. More people have found us. Something dramatic has happened. Um, so the Guardian research, Patrick, what was the statistic from yeah. the Guardian research? Let's put this into context and let me give you a bold headline as I see it, because I, yeah. I, I've studied all the data from the first day of lockdown right up to today. That's almost a year now. And I would say this, the church is facing the greatest missional opportunity for a generation. It's happening Amen. right now, and it's about to disappear. And within three to six months, it will be completely gone. And let me explain why. So can I take us a little bit back to the beginning? Please do, please yes. do. Yeah. Explosive research, which just gives us even more reason to act now. You know, when lockdown first happened, our whole nation was in crisis. We had five million, that's 10% of all adults in the whole country attended a single Anglican service led by our Archbishop of Canterbury. It was the largest ever congregation in the history of the entire Anglican Church. Uh, the following week, there were 2,300 people turned up to a virtual service at St. Martin in the Fields, advertised only days before. They usually have a congregation of 300. The Anglican Church launched a prayer line it had 6,000 calls in the first 48 hours as a result of a tiny amount of media attention. Meanwhile, across the whole country, and I'm sure both of you saw this, churches were stampeding to try and glue their churches together, their congregations together as a kind of emergency and go virtual. And we yeah. went, we created a, a, a equivalent to what we were doing on a Sunday, but quite honestly, they were for the ghetto, for the Christian community. And we created these services and we hoped our congregations would turn up. But what happened was this, most churches doing this, who were doing it reasonably well, saw their congregations, as far as I can see, double. Now, let me give you some supporting data for this. Double! Um, and, and that happened in my church. Uh, people that we don't know who they are turning up every Sunday, most of them with no church background before, coming for something. But the tragedy of it is that a year later, most churches have no idea who these extra visitors have been. Can you imagine having a church, let's say in, 19, uh, in 2018, and you're telling me for a whole year, for no reason at all you can understand, your congregation has doubled. And I say, from what to what? Say from 250 each Sunday, we now have 500. Oh, great. And have you got some names and addresses? No, 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 we don't have a single name and address. Sorry? Well, you presumably you have a mobile number or two. You've had 250 new people Every single Sunday, presumably you've got an email address. No, 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 none. What? Not a single email address? No, not one. Not a single mobile? No. Do you know how many are, are men or women? No idea. Are they old age pensions? Are they 95 year olds or are they 19 years old? Are they students? Are they, who are? We don't know. 
Can you imagine what a disaster that would be in terms of mission and outreach? That's about to happen. Many churches that will be thinking, what can we do? This is- Go to country. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to come to let, let me give you some more encouraging statistics first, okay? <laughs> yeah, we like encouraging statistics. It's just amazing. And we'll come to your own data as well, which confirms this. You know, 33% in May, the Guardian showed last May, 33% of all 18 to 34-year-olds were attending church services on a regular basis. In Theos, uh, uh, Theos survey showed 6% our people uh, said that uh, they were going to church more online. Well, actually, I think that was an underestimate. Durham University, 25% of all Londoners were saying that they were regularly engaging in online church. 50% of Londoners who were 18 to 35 year old been attending church regularly uh, in July and August alone. 50%. Now, listen. I know surveys can get things wrong. I know that political surveys, you know, they get, mm -hmm. oh, they say the conservatives are leading by 43%. In fact, it was only 42 or 41. Listen, I'm perfectly happy to even halve these figures. But even if we did, I'd still be saying 25% of all 18 to 35 year olds knocking on the door of the church regularly and saying, hello, anybody notice who I am? Okay, we go back to May. 25%, that's 12.5 million people attending church online. Your survey says 23%. I can live with that. Uh, your survey didn't include Northern Ireland. They're, they're actually more mm. likely to be attending mm. church than others. Yeah. Well, lockdown eases, they'll yeah. be off doing something else. But you know what? In my own church, for example, attendance has been very consistent. Mm. The church I'm going to is an Anglican church. It fits precisely in your survey. A um, uh, slightly older demographic, 100 people on a Sunday or thereabouts maybe 120 members, 130 members. But here's the point. The moment we went virtual, we were getting for peak services on Easter, 350 views, 400 yeah. views. Um, for normal Sundays, 170 views. Listen, you only need 70, 70 views if you have 100 people in your church, yes. you've served everyone. And of course you won't, uh, 10 people in your church will, won't be online or they don't know how to use Zoom or something. So yeah. no church will get 100% virtual. So 70 views for a congregation of 100, it's about what you would expect. But yes. each week we've been seeing 170 views. So yes. then you think, oh yes, yes, well everybody must be very religious. Maybe everybody's attending each other's churches and watching four churches on a Sunday. No way. <laughs> but the extraordinary thing is this, 4% of all people in the country who have had no church contract before COVID. Let yes. me say this again. 4% of the entire nation who had no contact with the church before COVID struck are now attending your churches regularly online. That's yeah. hundreds of thousands of people. And most people who are attending regular online did, who did not, this is also very important, most people who are new to church since COVID who have been attending your services regularly, most of them are saying that they intend to join your church. They want to continue regularly, either online or physically. They are ready. My question is, do you have a clue who they are? So you need to do what, you know when those telesales things where they're saying, oh, you can have this bracelet for five, mm -hmm. five pounds. Mm -hmm. you, uh, this is the number to go. We need to be doing that all the way through. So say, uh, you know, it needs to be in the first five minutes. Welcome to you. If you're not used to being in a physical church, we're especially mm -hmm. welcome to you. Here's our prayer line. Can you see this number right now? If you, if you on your smartphone, pick up your smartphone. If you go at one, two, three, four, five, six and say prayer, we will be praying for you. We will be praying for you right now. If you want to name a loved one, don't give your surname. That's absolutely fine. Do you know what it's doing? It's saying, wow, these people care. You know what? Mm -hmm. I might actually do it. Other things we can do is say, Come to the website now. On the website, there are people ready to chat with you about your own spiritual journey. If you want to give your life to Christ now, if you just want to give your life to Christ now, just type Jesus. We should be engaging with people, assuming that people are there, they're listening. Remember that most videos online are watched by for three minutes. Most yes. Christian videos, service videos, have been watched on average for 15 or so. That's amazing, but don't push your luck. Now is the time to do the little things, the little things that create spiritual energy, life, Vitality, this is what we should be doing. As a church leader, I'll be asking the question, how do I access that kind of a technology? 
And how do I get trained for it? Would there be somewhere to go, something to... Yeah. You're, looking, you're looking on your left. It's there. I, just look to your left. Yeah. <laughs> Hope is a national network, a community of churches. It's there as a resource base. I've been looking at this. It's, um, you know how with mission normally, we often say about seeker-friendly services. Mm -hmm. So we, we keep on creating our services as if they're for the people who are, we, we've known all along. But actually, we need to always remember now that we've got outsiders the global are there. The we've global got the global audience. and we've got loads of people who are completely unchurched. So this is a particular phenomenon of the younger generations. The younger generations in particular are coming along to, act to church online, but they don't know what the Bible is. They don't know if you like one end of it to the other. And a lot of what we do, even on our online services, is for the, we imagine our church, but we need to imagine when we're crafting, for one of a term, when we are crafting that online church experience, we need to imagine sitting in front of us, somebody who is 20, who's never been to church, who doesn't know what the Bible is. You can't just say, oh, you know that piece about Jonah. Because of course they don't know the piece about Jonah. They've never heard about, they don't know who Jonah is. <laughs> so just, this, you know, the things we say in talks. And again, when, when we come in, just always, even um, the other thing I talk about is we, where we host our services. A lot of our churches have hosted their services on Zoom. Well, you mm. can't find Zoom unless you've got an invite. So that's not going to help anybody. So you need to host your service. You need to stream it on YouTube. YouTube, yeah. Because people you can do it automatically. You think that's the crazy thing is these things cost nothing. It's absolutely yeah. unbelievable. All you've got to do is press a button. There's a button on my Zoom here, which will allow me to start streaming this video automatically on YouTube and on Facebook for nothing. Well, I mean, honestly, well, what, what are we doing? So I've said to church leaders, and they're absolutely gobsmacked. I said, do you know what your main ministry is at the moment? I said, no. I said, it's preaching to the unconverted. You're doing it every Sunday. Did you know that? That almost all of your, your greatest preaches are, uh, is, well, uh, th that's terrible because actually I've not been preaching the unconverted. I've been preaching to people about finding peace in the midst of turmoil of COVID. So yeah, well, that's fine, but it doesn't tell them how, to, how, how they can become a Christian. It doesn't tell them, um, you know, uh, when they're struggling with doubts about whether God even exists because they've just seen their mother die. You know, uh, they're wondering where she is. You know, I mean, we need to be, we need, we need to be really in, the, in this moment. As we bring this to, bring it uh, uh, to an end, you, you said something that provoked me at the beginning, that, uh, that the churches are grown with people coming together. But as soon as this pandemic is over, it, it's not impossible that it, people will go back. And what can, if I'm a church leader, I'm hearing this, I just need you to give me one or two tips uh, that will help to keep the mission going or amplify it. What would that be? Okay, I would say keep the keep the online thing channel open as long as you can and don't change it too much. So we need to have a hybrid stage, which is where we're doing physical and virtual church. You may need to do both. But the most important thing, the most important single lesson is this. Let's learn from the multinationals of this world, banks and insurers and, and people like Sainsbury's and Tesco. They know how to do this. If you have people who are coming to you and watching your product, watching your ministry, listen to them. Find out everything you possibly can about them and start serving them what they really need. You know, we need to ask them. And the other thing we need to do finally is test things out. See, the wonderful thing is, and that's what we did with COVID, I we have never seen such an unleashing of Christian innovation and creativity as we saw on March the 17th, 2020. It's just okay. unbelievable how many ministries just re, uh, reinvented themselves, turned themselves upside down um, and, and just carried on. So let's turn this into the greatest missional mission ever that we ever that seen. We have seen for 30 years. Awesome. We've already, it's, it's already been the greatest broadcast. It's the greatest scattering of seed our nation yes, has we've ever done. We've it, must ever be, done. it must be the greatest harvest as well. Since yes. the days of Billy Graham, we have scattered more seed. We've proclaimed the gospel more times. Thanks be to God for what we've been able to do. Now let's harvest. Thank you. Thank you. We, will see, we, we will be talking again soon, Patrick. Yeah. Thank Bye you. Bye-bye. <laughs>